Again, going to be a real quick video. Uh, please, at the end, I'll put up my uh, contact information. So if anyone would like to uh, jump into a deeper dive, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. My screen right now is the Starship program. So this is where, as a shipper, I can actually just process all my different type of shipments. So Starship is multi-carrier, multi-mode. And from here, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to pull by sales order number. But I can type that in. Uh, if it happens to be barcoded on your pick sheets, you could, of course, use a regular wedge type plug and play scanner, have Starship automatically load that uh, shipment information. Uh, now here, normally, when I put in a sales order number, either if I'm barcoding it or typing it in, uh, usually Starship loads it. But now in this case, I actually have our group related feature turned on, where instead of just loading the single order, Starship's automatically showing me I have additional orders going to that same ship too. And here's all the sales order header and light item detail that Starship's automatically mapped in for me. And with Starship, we just simply data map stage 100 fields, and those could be custom fields, like user-defined fields, or of course, standard uh, stage 100 fields. So we're gonna use all those different fields to help populate all the shipping information. So as a shipper, I don't have to click, type, touch. Uh, this is really just set up where all this data automatically populates for me, including things like sender. So as you see, we can do blind drop shipments, have that automatically be changed. Uh, recipient information, uh, Starship will do address validation, and we also validate the residential commercial flag. Even transportation details, we're gonna automatically populate carrier service, account information, even changing third party collect type shipments, and having Starship automatically populate all that uh, third party account info. Okay. And we also validate that billing account number, so I'm just going to quickly change that back to prepaid. Next door, shipment details are just all our shipment options. For packaging, this is where our shipper is going to be able to define that item box uh, detail, or if this was an LTL type shipment, item box pallet detail. So here I do have a packaging scenario. Starship's automatically packaged my blanket for me. Uh, but my other items, uh, automatically just bringing them into a custom package. From here, I can add additional boxes. We have a repeat box function if you need a, a bunch of boxes. Uh, but if I wanted to get an item box detail, it is just simply drag and drop. So I'll put these pillows in the blanket box. Um, and this drop down is just part of Starship's database where I can set up and store custom boxes, bags, bales, pallets, what have you. Okay, so I'm just going to use one of those here. Uh, quantities, that's uh, you know what we're ordering or what's available to ship. Here's my weight, my bill weight. That's dimensional weight. Starship would automatically calculate that information um, based on the carrier selected above. Now, also, if you're using a WMS, just know from a handheld device, uh, this is how all this data can be uh, populated inside Starship. Uh, because on that handheld device, you are going to be able to define, you know, box, pallet, dimensional detail, even, of course, the quantities being shipped. Starship does let shippers. We have a security feature. Uh, modify that. Quantity, of course, what we modify it to is what's going to write back inside of Sage. So I'm just going to scroll down to the rate quote, and this is where, as a shipper, I'm going to be able to see all the live rates that I have with my carrier. So here is business days, total days, ETAs, published list charges, contracts going to be my live charge, and then applied in Starship terms is just plus or minus any freight rules. So applied is what we usually write back into Sage because this is what we want to charge the customer. This shipment is all set up. I'm even using Starship's line item detail to populate things like the required international data. So now as a shipper, I don't have to worry about that. But here, I can click ship and process or do these shortcuts or even drop downs. I'll do ship and process right here. Uh, also, if I need, I can even create return labels at the same time I'm with my original shipment. But in a live environment, what Starship would be doing right now is just automatically populating your shipping documents. As you see here, I PDF everything, so it takes a moment. And then also I am using a smart label that displays a shipping label and packing list together. Uh, of course, we can send shipping labels to a thermal printer or printers. Uh, Starship also allows for unlimited custom documents, box two. And then of course, with this being an international shipment, I have Starship generating my shipper's letter of instruction, my certificate of origin, even my commercial invoice. And this one's customized, so it's signed and dated. Now, as a shipper, I don't have to stop and fill out any of this uh, information. Same thing if this was LTL, no lading forms, pallet labels, um, so a couple other things that Starship can generate. But once I click Ship and Process, Starship's going to print my document, take me immediately back to the main Starship screen, where I kind of rinse, repeat, go through that whole cycle again, and then really quick, back inside of Sage, 
invoice data entry. As soon as my clicker, uh, the commercial invoice, and this one's customized, so it's signed and dated. Now as a shipper, I don't have to stop and fill out any of this uh, information. Same thing if this was LTL, bill lading forms, pallet labels, um, so a couple other things that Starship can generate. But once I click ship and process, Starship's gonna print my document, take me immediately back to the main Starship screen, where I kind of rinse, repeat, go through that whole cycle again, and then really quick, back inside of Sage. So as soon as my shipper clicks ship and process, Starship is automatically gonna create the invoice. We're gonna write back the tracking information. I can track this. I can even see items of box detail because all this data is going into the correct Sage fields. And then here's my freight amount, plus or minus any freight rules. We could also do write back rules. And then here I've actually uh, added a user defined field called freight cost from Starship, simply passing back my live contract rate. So before someone updates these invoices, they could actually compare the two and it should be $75. Okay. So we can always override that freight amount field. Right. So that's the right. Uh, another feature included with Starship that does not affect your Starship user seats is the ability to rate quote from sales order entry. So we're going to give that power to the uh, front office or sales reps. Also, our dashboard program is included with Starship, a reporting tool, we have, uh, some widgets, heat maps, and even an e-notify program where you can design your own custom email templates. So please feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions or would like to schedule a call uh, so we can take a deeper look at Starship's integration with Sage 100. Thanks again. Have a good one. Bye.